Okay, it was the summer of 1965. Lyndon Johnson had just started bombing North Vietnam. It was the summer of LSD, raising one, one's consciousness. And it was the summer of free love. What would a pill be new? Okay, where I'm at, I'm over here at the corner of Ocean Park Boulevard and Main Street, and I'm gonna take you fans to where Jim Manzarek, the Lizard King, Mr. Mojo Ryzen, Ray Manzarek, and Dorothy Fujikawa lived that summer of 1965 on Fraser Avenue here in Ocean Park. Now, before I start, I've already done this for you fans. They, on this corner, I've done my due diligence in San. This is where Olivia's Soul Kitchen was. On this side, on the beach side, 2618. And on the blogosphere, they always put where the, the surf shop is over there, which is 2619. And apparently they were tearing out all of Venice, old Venice in 1965 when Jim and Ray lived here with, with Dorothy Fujikawa. And they tore all that area out. And pretty much where Ray and Jim and Dorothy uh, once lived, it still looks original. So at the time they put the, they tore down this corner, Olivia Soul Kitchen. They tore it out in 1970 and for whatever reason they put this goofy ass incongruous heritage museum uh, screwing up the integrity of the street, which really doesn't matter because in 1965 you have to remember this was a bohemian alternative environment, coffee houses galore. Jazz clubs, used bookstores, cheap eateries, where uh, in fact uh, most of the UCLA film students they used to congregate here, where Olivia's was right here, which incidentally, if you're at all interested, this is where Linda Ronstadt with the Stone Ponies was discovered. Okay, so sadly, as you can see, they tore it out, and uh, this place. For whatever it's worth, you can't say no longer it's an alternative alternative environment, a bohemian enclave. It's pretty much a uh, trust fund baby's nightmare or rather heaven, however you want to however you, you want to title it. Okay. So I'm gonna take you fans to Fraser Avenue and I wanna clarify one mistake that's spread all over the world on the blogosphere. For whatever reason, they always say that they lived at 147 Fraser Avenue. I'm going to rectify that mistake right now to you fans of the Lizard King and Ray Manzarek. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the correct address. And I don't get it. Just like they always put the wrong address where Pam died. And uh, they're always putting the wrong addresses. Nobody's checking their sources, checking their premises. And uh, so Ray, Jim, and Dorothy, they lived at 154 Fraser Avenue. For whatever reason, they're always putting 147. 
And in fact, the way I found out about it is uh, in 2003, Ray released his uh, UCLA uh, film school um, films that he made called Induction and Evergreen. And as an extra, he attached a little roundabout of uh, his stomping grounds with Jim that summer, which incidentally, I just want to say right there, I'd like to imagine that Ray and Jim, if they couldn't find the book that Jim was looking for, they'd go to the Santa Monica Library, which was here, has been here since 1918. So here you go, you fans. This is Main, Main Street, what once was Ocean Park, in which incidentally, there was a famous amusement park on the beach at that time when Jim and Ray met and it closed down in 1967 and adjacent to the uh, to the POP pier the Pacific Ocean Park was another pier called Lick Pier and that's where they had uh, the Cheetah Club where Jim performed with the doors there in spring of 1967 which start where, is where he started the first nose dive in musical history into the audience which after that became the rigor for all uh, every other uh, rock star after that. Now, okay, here we are. Here's old Venice uh, off Niacin Way. This is where Jim, Jim and Ray and Dorothy lived. They would have walked to that corner to eat soul food at Olivia's when Dorothy got home, or rather when Jim and Ray picked her up after work. And uh, like I said, they tore all this up to put all this crap here. And that's exactly right there, approximately, where Ray and Jim met. After him not seeing him for six weeks, he was living on De Dennis Jacobs' roof. He lost 35 pounds, and Ray goes, well, how'd you lose so much weight? He goes, I've been taking acid and not eating. <laughs> Actually, he was eating oranges and avocados because his parents cut him off. Okay, the, uh, Jim and Ray and Dorothy lived where I'm gonna take you. They lived there from uh, June, at least Jim lived with them from uh, July to uh, about October, November until Arthur Reddick, old Arthur Reddick Oscar kicked them out. Let me have a, let me take a little shot right here. Let me show you fans approximately where uh, Ray came upon Jim in cutoffs, looking like a sculpted Greek god, like he called them, living on Dennis Jacobs' roof. This is where he would have, uh, they would have been hanging out that summer with a satisfaction blaring out of the radio, Mr. Tambourine Man, Wooly Bully, and Help was released that summer, the Help, the, the Beatles movie. Okay, let's walk over there, and I, I just wanna say when uh, Jim, and, and Jim and Ray and Dorothy got kicked out of this apartment, serendipitously, Billy James, the a &R man, Signed him up to Columbia for six months. He didn't give him any money, but he gave him instruments. That's how Ray got his uh, his Continental Vox. I gave him at Carnival style of sound. And again, uh, back to that Carnival sound. They got it because back what I was saying earlier, uh, POP Pacific Ocean Park Pier with the amusements, the rides they had at roller coasters. Uh, I guess the tone or the uh, the energy at that time would have been carnivalesque. So it was a pretty hip, cool place to live at the time. Ray, like I said, Ray see, meeting Jim over there on the beach. And he said, what you been doing? He goes, I've been living on Den Dennis Jacob's roof. And I wrote some songs. He goes, what are they called? He goes, Moonlight Drive. Summer's almost gone. End of the night. Okay, I'm going to, before I go to that address at 154, for you fans all over the world, I'm going to take you to 139 Fraser, where the 42-year-old uh, Margot Hemingway was found dead on phenobarbital in 1996, uh, a year before the 35th anniversary of her, uh, of her uh, grandfather, Ernest Hemingway, committing suicide. She died here, and I'm going to show you fans all over the world the mistake on the blogosphere, how they put 147 Fraser. And getting back to what I was saying when they released Evergreen and Induction, 
uh, Ray did the little film and he went to the apartment where I'm going to take, take you so I'm going to rectify that mistake and right here is where the first million dollar paid supermodel for Fabergé for a perfume called Babe was found dead in 1996. Okay, here's the address they always put, 147 for you fans. For whatever reason, they keep on multiplying that mistake. It's not 147, okay, right here. It's not 147. And in this apartment, Jim was living, he was living in the bedroom because he had an electric blanket. And Ray and Dorothy, they lived in the front and uh in the living room and they they gave jim the back room because they 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 wanted to sleep near the heater well here you go and i just want to say for you fans all over the world it's that house right there the apartment is for rent can you believe it where where jim and ray and dorothy lived that summer of 1965 here you go where old arthur reddick oscar rented this apartment up on top of that garage this is where musical history was made This is where Jim and Ray and Dorothy lived until October or November. And incidentally, after they got kicked out, uh, Robbie rented that apartment. And uh, another thing too, uh, it they were paying $75. And that came out to $2 a day, if you can believe that. And they, this Oscar, this guy that lived in the front here, the landlord, he kicked them out because Ray had an army buddy of his named Brent Leach who became a uh, character actor in the 60s and 70s and 80s. He still acts. You can see him in Going South. Anyway, he uh, he was living there too with them. Ray, uh, Brent Leach and Jim were living in the bedroom. And uh, he called he called uh, Ray into the front one day. He says, hey, Ray, you and that bunch got to leave. <laughs> I ran into two people, now you got four and all kinds of activity in and out. So this is where it was. And if you're if you've if you lived here in the 60s and 70s, this place was all dilapidated on steroids. Now, like I said, it's like a really upper, upper, high-end. Unless you you bought this house in 1930, the rents are prohibitive, the condos are millions of dollars, and uh America and a metaphor and uh, you fans listening to this get ready to a city coming to where you all live maybe in the Midwest West America is going to be like that in another 20 years only the rich and the famous and the children of the rich and famous will have houses and I've seen it change I know from what I speak and so okay well and like I was saying uh Jim and Ray, when they would drop Dorothy off, they would go to the UCLA Music Center, or the music school rather, and they would practice in the basement. And that, that's, they had a piano there, so Ray and, uh, Ray and Jim would play there. And then they'd go down over here to uh, a little bit north over here. And they'd work out where Muscle Beach used to be, where Jack Lane, Dave Draper, and all the old, uh, those strong men, those weightlifters of the 1950s used to hang out and uh, fly in the trapeze and do tricks. Well, they tore it out in the 19, late 1950s. They rebuilt it a little bit south of us. But this is where Jim and Ray hung out that whole summer, watching Man From Uncle, of course, watching all those uh, teenager shows that they had, those great dancing shows, Shindig shebang where the action is chivalry hollywood a go-go this is where they would have been hanging out this is the stompy grounds and then when, when they would have uh, picked up dorothy they would go down there they'd walk here from this block to olivia's or they go to uh, la cabana on roses avenue which incidentally is still there in fact ray mentioned that, that restaurant not by name but he he mentioned it in the book that he put out called Poet in Exile about Jim disappearing on living in an island in the Seychelles. And he mentioned about this restaurant where Jim used to like to go because they had this young, pretty senorita patting out the corn tortillas, which they incidentally still do. 
in a uh, brick layered uh, fireplace. So, uh, okay, let's go. Let's end that over here. And uh, as you can see, it's no longer a bohemian hippie environment. Okay, let's go over here. At least we're preserving this for posterity. And you fans of the Lizard King, Mr. Mojo Ryzen, which incidentally was an anagram of his name. Can you believe it? Jim Morrison. He was goofing around one day and it's spelled Mr. Mojo Ryzen. And what does Mojo signify? Charms and spells. Here you go, you fans. All over the world. 154 Fraser Avenue. Okay, well... Wherever you're at, Jim and Ray, thank you for that fantastic music and that luckily, luckily that fantastic time when you were both in your early youth. Okay, 